Testing. 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 I play. I play Harold. I play Mabel. <laughs> yeah, but what, what if you don't know what, you, what we're doing? What we do? <laughs> yeah. What exactly? Do I don't. I don't. Do? Who's <laughs> reading the uh, <laughs> questions? <laughs> you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'll read the question. That's fine. All right. Am I supposed to be like looking at the camera? I've never yeah, we're all looking at the camera. I've never really done this. All looking right at the lens. Okay, I'll look right at the lens. Got it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Serial Q and A, and we're here at the Oak Orchard Bowling Alley, where it all started. I'm Stephanie Harlow, and I play Mabel. I'm Michael Chesla, and I play Harold. I'm James Coleman. I am one of the series creators, writers, and directors of Serial. I'm Vince Coleman. I am one of the series creators, directors, and writers as well. I'm Chad Mellencon. I'm the location scout and also the sound guy. And I'm Michael Del Rosa, special makeup effects. So guys, we are here today to answer some of your questions. Uh, we're very excited to share some behind the scenes stuff with you and tell you about the process of making the series and how it all came about. So I'm going to read off my phone like the gross millennial that I am. And let's start from the beginning. I'm going to start from uh, top comments to bottom comments. So. The first question, since I guess I'm moderating now. This comment comes from at Rachel Robinson 4768. And the question is, hi, Stephanie. If my question is not too personal, may I ask, are you and the YouTuber Kimberlea related? The reason why I'm asking you this question is I've wondered this in the past, viewing all of your content and the research and the way you both engage with your audience is so very much alike. You both have beautiful hair and skin. No, we're not related, but we are friends. I met Kimberlea for the first time at this past Crime Con, which was in Orlando. We met in person for the first time, but we've actually been talking online for a long time. And actually, sorry, <coughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> what the hell, man? I had to cough. It'd be easier to be shooting an episode. Oh, I'm really sorry. I was holding it in, and I was gagging on it. All right. I was very surprised at how short she was because I am only five four, and people think I'm short. But Kimberly was shorter than I was, so she's got to be like five one. Uh, she's gorgeous in person and on film. I love the way she covers true crime cases, and I'm very flattered that you think we're related. Thank you. We also want to say thank you to Kimberlea for joining the series. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been very helpful and very accommodating. Also, her uh, husband or her boyfriend, I'm not sure what, is a filmmaker, so shout out to him. Uh, thank you for uh, helping us. And you will be seeing more of Kimberlea, even though she hasn't agreed to it yet, but we're going to ask her for more. She has to agree now. Yeah, she's the town news anchor so she is the town news anchor maybe yeah. she'll make a an appearance in person one day in ashburn yeah. falls let us know in the comments if you'd like to see her for real and let her know that you'd like to see her for real <clears throat> yep <clears throat> okay there's need some cough drops or something before we continue no the next question I feel like i'm in an elementary school everybody's coughing and sniffling next question stephanie would you consider acting side by side with johnny depp in a horror thriller action romance movie i love watching mabel and harold that's a very specific question. Do you know Johnny Depp? Is he working on some, what was it, romance, horror? Or... Romance, thriller, horror. Yeah, all of those things combined. Action. Romance, horror, thriller, action, across from Johnny Depp? Absolutely. Absolutely. Who doesn't love Johnny Depp? <laughs> Amber Heard. <laughs> Too soon. That question came from at Catherine Billinghurst 188. Catherine, if you know Johnny Depp and you think he's interested in doing some film project, let me know. Hit me up. And that was a wants, very specific question. And if he wants to work with us, Does we can Does he want to be nothing. in Serial? Next question. For free? This question comes from at Rukiuka. Am I saying that right? I don't know. It's R-U-K-I-U-K-A. -A, Rukiuka. Mm -hmm. As someone who is also local to central New York, I'm very curious about the shooting locations and how they were chosen, as well as any neat reasons why. I feel like this area is a hidden gem and I'd like the cast and the crew's thoughts on it as well. I think we could pass that question to Chad. Chad. Let me, let me give him a segue. Finding locations is never easy. And Chad came about and offered to go out and talk to people. And he has a very charming presence. Mm -hmm. And I will let him discuss it from there. I, uh, I was actually born and raised in Albion. And these wonderful people came to me about this, uh, this series that they wanted to film. We actually met Chad on the set of the Burned Over District. He was an extra as a cult member for the, of the town. Yes, I'm sorry. 
yeah, I was a I was a cult member in the uh, the burned over district. It was a lot of fun. Um, they needed some Amish guy, and uh, mm. I guess I looked pretty Amish. <laughs> Do you laugh? <laughs> really? Come on. So, <laughs> so true. He he looks. They told we me. Don't wanna, we don't want to. I mean, he was casted for the way yeah. he looked. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and uh, actually, that scene of the burned over district was filmed in Albion, where Chad happened to live his whole life. A nice thing about Chad is most of the time with filmmaking, people come to you and think, hey, can you help me do this? Can you help me make that? Chad came about and said, hey, I can help you do this, which is very refreshing. He came and said, hey, I can help you get these locations. I can help be a part of things and part of the team. So Chad, tell us a little bit about these locations in LB in New York. Chad's been absolutely instrumental behind the scenes. You might recognize Chad from episode, was it episode two of yeah. Harold and Mabel? Yes, sir. Episode Where he played Alex, who didn't have the name Alex yet in episode two, but Mabel murders him in the pumpkin patch. So Chad's already been in Serial, and then even after he was killed off, he remained with the team, he continued working behind the scenes, and when I say we could not have done any of this without him, it's 100% true. Probably the most important behind the scenes person as far as getting locations, because location, getting locations is hard. Who knew, by the way? Who knew? I didn't. They did. But I didn't know that it was hard. And Chad is just so good at talking to people. He's unassuming. He's, you know, kind. And he's able to converse with a lot of people. And he's gotten us these great locations. And even a write-up in the local newspaper because we've shot at so many locations in Albion. A very cool thing about uh, mm -hmm. central New York and upstate New York is there's a lot of, I guess, unbothered architecture. And um, things that are still here that haven't really been adjusted disturbed. yeah disturbed and they haven't really been adjusted for modern day so you, you still get to see color and old architecture so it's not just everything's gray and dull and you know like even mcdonald's sucks now like remember you used to have color in a playpen now it's just gray yeah yeah that, that house is amazing oh, yeah yeah, yeah amazing well, we should mention her we should definitely yeah. mention her oh, yeah. turn it off all right ready yeah. let's give her M no, michelle yeah just so you know that gator is not off camera yeah. no just sit down come on Okay, on. Well, what you're you want talking about Gatorade and so, vitamin okay, water. You guys okay, here's uh, really how it happens. <laughs> here's how Central New York happens. Here's how we get locations, guys. Here's one of the the simplest ways and how I guess I it guess, comes about. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of times, Chad will tell me, "Hey, I might be able to get this library, or I might be able to get this cool house, or this canal, or this or this or that." And a lot of times, I will write a scene around a location because I know we have access to it, and Chad is able to get access to it. And how do you do that, Chad? I, I get access by talking to the owners of each location and uh, asking them and telling them like I'm part of a film company from outside of Rochester and uh, they're, they're looking to film in this kind of particular location for this episode or something and I talk to them and they are normally on board. They're actually really on board with things. And uh, we've filmed at a couple locations in Albion that Chad has secured, and uh, one of them is the house that Harold and Harold's mother lives in. And I'm sure if you've seen Serial, you noticed how very unique and interesting this house is. Chad, explain how you got access to this house. So the way I got access to uh, Harold's mom's house is by a very nice lady called Michelle. Uh, she's actually my mom's one of my mom's good friends, and. I talked to her about us filming at this particular location and she was just so on board when I talked to her about us like filming the series and stuff. And we filmed a lot there obviously. Mm -hmm. And I know we're gonna film there more. And Michelle and her husband have been so great. We filmed there a lot on during the Halloween episode where Harold actually kills your brother. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he killed my brother, uh, Bids, unfortunately. Yeah. Probably one of the worst ways to probably die. Yeah, that series. was the first link between Harold and Mabel, I feel like, because we each killed a brother. Shout out to Biz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bizzy LaChancey. So when we were there on for the Halloween episode, we were there so late, and there was blood all over the front porch, and Michelle's husband was like, don't worry, I'll just hose that off. And, and they were fine with it. You know, it's their house we're filming in. We're there all hours, and they're absolutely fine with it. We can use their basement, which is scary because there's spiders in there, and I don't go down there, but... Yeah. It, there's there it's a great basement to film a horror series in yes. and the entire house is just set up perfectly it so. is and she has a lot of cool things and we just want to say a shout out to everyone in Albion that's helped us the library uh michelle and her home randy and the bowling alley 
I'm probably missing some. Oh, um, Chad, what was the the store oh. called? Uh, the Downtown Browsery. The Downtown oh, Browsery, the and her name is the uh, Liz. Liz, shout out to you. Um, the Donut Shop. Beaver Alley. Donuts Beaver Delight. Alley. Donuts Delight. Donuts Delight. On Culver, uh, I think. Verholst, um, the Pumpkin Patch. There's a lot. So the Diner that the we Santa know. Claus the, the Diner, Tom Michalitsis. Yeah. Uh, the Santa know, Claus School. The Santa Claus School. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next question. <clears throat> Actually, the bowling alley was one of the only places that we already had in mind before filming this. So, like, we said, Chad, can you find us a bowling alley? And then, lo and behold, we're at a bowling alley. It's a little different yeah. than that. Vince and I were talking about a bowling alley, and then Chad just happened to have a bowling alley. All like It all kind of just, it, it was a perfect storm. It was meant to be. Yeah. It was destiny. In films, things like that happen yeah. when they're meant to be. Can I actually have a break-off question from that question? Because we talked about the Halloween episode. And... <clears throat> The, the character that was killed in that, who's played by Biz, you had to get some sort of like mask, right? To make it look like Harold had removed his face and put it on. And Mike made that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell us quickly about your process to make that? Because it was very cool. Yeah, well, it, actually it was, <laughs> I hate to admit to this, but it was pre-made. I mean, that was a silicone mask that I had. It was a, um, it was from the, um, the Texas Chainsaw massacre thing. Mm -hmm. And we just, uh, I just modified it and we covered it up in blood and everything. And, it was as if, you know, he's killed off the, the guy's... What was his name, his name again? Biz. 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 Because these yeah. are shot in such short amounts of time, like, yeah. that was a, kind of a joke that yeah. we were saying, like, what if he was wearing his face and handing out candy, and then yeah. we are like, Mike, you got anything laying around? And Mike was like, of course he does. Yeah. And that's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things with our films. We just kind of go to Mike and see what he has or what he can come up with really fast, and then, yeah, we just raid his uh, shop. Should we mention about the, the hammer gag? <laughs> the amount of times. Oh, it oh, happened. It oh, like yeah, yeah. 20 or <laughs> yeah. 25. I forgot we were on, what, take like four or something? And, uh, oh, no, we were on like then we take gave, 12. I mean, yeah, something if you like, want to, and then they can send me the footage and I can input that in. Yeah, yeah. sure, because yeah. that would be fun to watch sure. over and over again. And make me look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anyone miss a mark repeatedly. All right, well, I had the glasses on, I had a mask on. But you see, you didn't... All right. Yeah. All right, but anyway. And it got in your face because <laughs> you were yes. watching yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's an effect you'll never see. <laughs> We'll just say that. Yeah, so hey, it still looked good. Though. He's talking about when um, when Harold hits the guy in the head with the mallet. Yeah, he there was a blood packet in that mallet that was supposed to go off, but he kept missing, so it would just squirt off camera. And no matter what we did, he just would not hit it right. Uh, he's a great actor. He's not a great killer. No, in real life. Okay, ready? Hey, give him a good whack. Don't be don't be gentle. Yeah, it's hard for me to see. Uh, I'm so right here. Take the mask off. Take the mask off oh, so you man. can see. Yeah, but I can see that. <laughs> Dick. Looking at him, looking at him. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, love the eyebrow. And action. Are we good? My brain. Okay, so you Mike. completely chase. Mike, make so sure it's on the other side where the camera is, not not like on your side. So right here. Yes. Same spot as before. Um, so be. how should I do that? How should I be here? Because I, exactly I can't right. hold the door. This isn't how I held it before. I held it. Different. It's fine. That's fine. Okay, we're gonna take it from the. We cool. And action. We cool. Oh, that one fucking hurts. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? You said you're gonna plan to get whiplash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm for seeing it. I'm premeditating that I will have it. Okay, That's thank right. you That's very right. much. You're welcome. All of the trauma <laughs> I've endured on this set. Well, Don't let this recording be edited. <laughs> <laughs> we got to roll on this. Okay, I'm gonna ask the next question. Next question. <laughs> Do the actors wear their own clothes? Has there been specific wardrobe changes? The music is on point as well, and the small details of socks and bows and hair and the nosy neighbor outfit, etc. So uh, let's have Chase start with that one. Um, no, I don't wear my own clothes. Uh, Harold has a specific attire, and um, I, I actually get most of his stuff at thrift stores. What's your process for picking up his clothing? Just uh, I just had a, a you know a vision in, in mind for Harold and. Uh, that he'd wear the uh, the polo shirt, you know, buttoned up to the top. And, you know, he's just a very, you know, very basic kind of guy as far as fashion goes. 
So I just kept that in mind when I shopped for his, you know, his attire from head to toe. He sort of just wants to blend in. All we yeah. told Michael for this was you're trapped in the 90s and he, yeah. he went crazy with it and every yeah. everything he wears is excellently picked out by him. And uh, that yeah. whole 90s aesthetic was actually, it came about because Mike brought, he bought his sister a car a couple, a couple years ago that was a, a 90... A 94 a Buick Century. And it was in great shape, and it was that car you saw so much growing up, that we saw so much growing up, and the minute we saw it, we're like, we're going to have to use this in a movie someday, and then we found the perfect character to drive that car. So, uh, shout out to Mike's sister, her name is uh, uh, Julie Harris. Julie Harris, yep. and we appreciate her for uh, allowing us to use her vehicle. It's a classic. It is a classic. Yeah. It's a nice car. Uh, there's more to that, though. Um, has there been specific wardrobe changes? Uh, actually, again, to go off what Michael said, the only thing we really gave him was a guy stuck in the 90s, and then anything you tell Michael, he's going to take it and uh, take it too far and go overboard. So that's like what he's the, done with Harold. Uh, like the, the, the tie that popped off when oh, yeah, the yeah. prostitute grabbed it. Oh, honey, you don't have to pay me. Listen up. Well, maybe we could just talk. It was also, uh, you know, Michael Michael adding in his goofiness to it. Uh, he, that's what he does. He goes overboard. We say, do this, do that, and he'll add more. Like or the or the powder in the Santa Claus beard. That was his idea too, which is really funny. Something about the socks. Uh, what was the deal with the socks, Michael? Oh, no, I just wanted to make it look like you know Harold's just this absent-minded. I mean, he's, he's just awkward. Yeah, he's just an awkward guy, and you know, I, I've worn Miss. Match socks before. You are so, just Harold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, if, if, you More know, so I, as I, the time goes yeah. on. I got a clean white sock and a clean black sock. You know, I, I throw them on. So. And what? Why the? Why the dress shoes on Halloween? Oh well, <clears throat> my uh, my idea behind that was that Hall uh, Halloween is his favorite favorite you know t uh, day of the year. So he, he kind of wanted to be dressed up a little bit differently. Uh, so he had khakis on and and you know. Uh, dress dress uh, shoes. How did everyone um, figure out that he had two different color socks? Oh, you can see when he's standing. No, oh, yeah, because okay. I bend over with the pumpkin, and right. my my uh, you could see because okay. uh, and one of them sitting at at the on the steps, and you could see because my pants were like too high. Because I remember you pointing that out to me yeah. on set, and I'm like, you're nuts. Like nobody's gonna see this. <laughs> oh, they saw. <laughs> they saw it. So that that's actually something I want to point out is is we give the characters, you know, we write the character out and give it to the actors mm -hmm. to really bring them to life. So. Yeah. And they uh, evolve, I think. Absolutely. Uh, to go off the bow and the hair, Stephanie, if you could tell us, like, how you approached Mabel and what your thought processes with her were. So I, I feel like both Harold and Mabel have evolved as we've come to become more, like, connected with them and as we know more about them because we didn't have a specific character in mind. We just knew what we were going to do. But as you continue playing a character, you get closer to it and you also kind of evolve your knowledge of where the person's coming from. What are their motivations? What is their background like? So Mabel gives me very much like little girl stuck in an adult body, which is why I used the bow, especially for that episode, which was when her car broke down because she's calling her father. She's whining. She's asking for him to come and help her. Something very traumatic happened to Mabel when she was little. And so she was sort of frozen emotionally in that state. And so she will sometimes look like an adult woman, but she's usually coming from a place of um, a very juvenile place, a very emotion fueled sort of, uh, what is it called when you, I can't find the word. when you Emotionally just, stunted. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, she's, she does things without thinking. She, impulsive. she does, she's impulsive, like a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so that's where the bow came in and, you know, we, like, we have the scrubs for episode two and those have come back up as well, the scrubs. So we'll bring things back and have callbacks and, you know, we're just trying to see who these characters are and as we go into season two, it's going to change as well. But yeah, I, I wear all my own clothes for the most part, except for the scrubs. They were not mine. They are not. Yeah. So yeah, you'll, you'll see more backstory when it comes yeah. to Harold and Mabel. We're going to really flesh them out as far as who they are and what formed them into what they are now. Next question. Did anyone go off script and ad lib? All the time. So I, I'll, I'll say this, guys. With this series, is it, 
the reason we started it, my brother and I were talking, and, and filmmaking at some points is extremely difficult, and it's stressful, and it's frustrating, and the, the bigger it gets, the harder it gets. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no. Okay. Sometimes the bigger the production is, the harder the production is. <laughs> Come on. Hey. Okay. The more involved. The more, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the bigger the production is, the more complicated it gets at times, and it becomes stressful, and it, it's, it stops being fun. But we started making movies as kids because it was fun to us. So we had a talk, and we thought, let's bring filmmaking back to being fun. So we have a small crew. Like, this is everybody that makes this happen, as far as behind-the-scenes stuff and camera work and editing all that. So... Our, our thing was, let's have a fun atmosphere on set. If there can be ad-libbing, ad-lib. If you have an idea, throw it out there. Let's see what kind of ridiculous things we can come up with. And again, when you let Michael Chesley here uh, run rampant, he'll... Uh, he'll run rampant. He, you, have to, you have to dial him back a little because he won't stop. And uh, so what's your guys' uh, thought process on ad-libs and all that kind of stuff? Let's hear your take on it all. <clears throat> well, my, my thought is that, you know, the script is, 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 is a blueprint. Um, and... Uh, I think ad living some of the best things come from ad living and just being, you know, off the cuff. You know, uh, Robin Williams is one of the best ad libbers of all time. And I just think that, that in the moment, spontaneity adds a, a, a you know, an extra layer. A, yeah, a valuable element to uh, the process. So, like, we, we have so much fun. And I think that's my favorite part about filming is we do have so much fun. Like, in the Trick or Treat episode oh, yeah. with the mask, you said, I made it myself when yeah. you were wearing it. That wasn't in there. Yeah. And we had to do several takes of that because we couldn't stop laughing. Thanks. It's a scary mask, mister. Thank you. I made it myself. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's, a good line. that's a good line. Come on. <laughs> you asshole. Yeah, right. <laughs> was that not a good line? Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> All right. So. That is a scary mask, mister. Did you get it at the store? I thought we weren't keeping that line. No, no, we are. Oh, oh shit. Oh, Dude, just roll with it. Okay. Gee, I th All right, we're speeding. Okay. Thanks. That's a scary mask, mister. I made it myself. <laughs> you didn't say thanks. Yeah, you gotta say thanks. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Airspeed. That's a scary mask, Mister. Thanks. I made it myself. Okay. See you later. Have a good night. You're supposed to say happy supposed Halloween. Happy <laughs> Alright, happy Halloween and I'll say Hold on. You're what? gonna say have a good night, then Shh. walk up okay. to here and then turn around and be like, Happy Halloween yes. and that's how yes. it ends. Yes. Yes. Alright, come back here though. <laughs> so I'll go fast so, so it goes. <laughs> Sorry, right, guys. Come on, we need, we need right. to do we need like to do this. Okay. 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 okay, talk real loud. Okay. okay. And then when you Thanks, have a good night, turn go to the step, turn back around, and happy Halloween. Yes. Thanks. That's a scary mask, mister. Thank you. I made it myself. Well, have a good night. You too. Happy Halloween. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. What? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Too funny. wait. Thank you. I made it myself. Well, have a good night. You too. I heard you guys laughing. Oh. <laughs> and she comes and jiggles. <laughs> oh my God. It was so funny and so off the cuff and just unexpected and it kind of just worked even though we didn't expect it. It's going to work better if you let people just be themselves and be more fluid and you're not making them stick to a very static script. They're going to feel more freedom to express themselves and you may get something good out of that, you may not, but either way, you wouldn't know if you didn't try. Yeah, and when you really get inside the character and walk in their shoes, you it just comes naturally. You Are know. you inside the character? Yeah. Yeah. Also that or is question, he inside you? Yeah, it kind of adds authenticity to it as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a more genuineness. 
that I think uh, oh, people yeah. could pick up on. So, so that, that question was from at Amy M five one one four. And yeah, just to wrap it up with the ad living, there's a lot of improv going on from the actors, from Vince and I, Mike, even Chad sometimes throws in ideas. That's the fun of this whole series is we're going out there and yes, we have a script, but we very often will deviate from what was there and add in little things that we think are funny, like Harold fingering the bowling ball and the girl eating the Snickers bar. Like that all came about on set because it was funny in the moment and oh him jumping through the cornfield that was again on set we i don't even know who said it was it you chad yeah yeah, yeah so we were originally gonna have him just peeking around the cornfield and he mentioned why doesn't he hop around hop like a rabbit yeah. yeah you gotta come closer you gotta come a little closer right. come like five feet forward i was trying to just see my head but i took it okay right there okay do it again okay you ready and action Okay, ready? And action. Hold on. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god. Ready? <laughs> action. And, like and now we were talking about, remember that we were like, what if we had some kids bullying, yeah. bullying yes. Michael Chase, and then we and found some kids. And then the kids ended up bullying us. Yeah. Yeah, they we were scaring some, us. Yeah, we found some kids at Furholz, so and yeah. they were like, yeah, we'd love to bully Harold, so. <laughs> there, yeah. were, there was kids, like, hiding in the cornfield. Yeah. There was kids hiding in the cornfield, and they were they knew we were there, and they were trying to, like, scare us. And um, what did they have, like, a... They had like a witch's like voice box. Yeah, it was like a yeah. voice changer, and so they kept and it scared. It scared me. Because the yeah. farm is actually a haunted hayride, so these kids yes. were like the kids, the children of the farmers that set up this hayride. So I'm like, so. are we actually going to be murdered right now yeah, while we're weird. filming yeah. this? You know, I was a little scared. Murder? I don't get scared. Yeah, and but, but then he Vince is like, I'm going to investigate. Then Vince doesn't come back for like ten minutes, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so then we finally find these kids, and we're like, get out here, you little hooligans, and make yourselves useful. <laughs> we're gonna need you to bully this guy, and they were so for it. And then James had to call their parents. Obviously, we did get permission. Yeah. We did, so we didn't just we didn't just take yeah, advantage of some children we found yeah, in a corner. These field. are the weird things that happen on the set of cereal. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. you just gotta roll with it, you know. James um, pulled out some money. He was like, can I get you guys to do something for $20? Hmm. They were like, whatever you want. Yeah, that makes me sound great. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to edit that out, too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can do that, right? Wait, why don't we actually just cut to them? They're yelling. Dude, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. That. Are you guys yeah, cool? Do you guys want to be in it? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Do you guys have uh, Instagrams? Um, no. I do. Oh. Do you have a, okay, go, do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, no. Uh, probably a bit. All right, go on. All right. I, I'm not, I've just got to have you guys follow Vince, me on YouTube. You, just, you guys could just Do you guys them. have phones? <laughs> Do you live in this cornfield? We, we yeah, don't. okay. With the oh, sorry, yeah. Me and him over yeah. there. Like, so you don't inhabit the cornfield? Yeah. <laughs> You're not living in the corn maze, right? No, we're we scaring them. You're scaring them? That's amazing. Do your parents know you're here or can we kidnap you? Ah, oh, no, I can't. Guys, who's the most trustworthy? Out? <laughs> yeah. okay. We're gonna say Harold looks like a rabbit. Rabbit face, rabbit face. He's a freak. Yeah, that's, okay, okay. that's what you want him to say? Uh, Harold's rabbit a freak. Face? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Harold's a freak. And rabbit you, you face. Harold's freak, rabbit face. Um, what else? Yeah, like go. All Loser. Out. Mama's boy. Yeah. yeah, mama's boy. Yeah, definitely Loser. mama's boy. Take one. Harold's a mama's freak. boy. You're ugly. You're... Oh, wait. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, <laughs> no, no, you're... One more time, man. You, you, go, you go, you got it. Say you're ugly. Here you go, guys. Ready? And. Take two. No, no, no. You don't have to do it. Okay, on action, okay? Ready? And action. You're, you're ugly, boy. rabbit boy. You're ugly. One more time, guys. Get a little bit closer to each other. Yeah, yeah. Just keep, like that. Keep doing it. Just, just keep repeating keep it. Okay, take one again. step. Hold oh, on. Let me just do it. Yeah, just keep keep doing it. Action. You're a rabbit face. You're a rabbit face. You're a rabbit face. You're such a rabbit face. You're a rabbit face. You're such a rabbit face. You're ugly. Rabbit face. You're ugly. You ugly freak. That was good, guys. Thank you. Okay, so this question is from at Kelly Dunn 5655 and the question is where did the idea for this film come from which I think I said already but basically we just wanted to go back to our roots of making films fun again and short content 
and basically Vince and I, we were just talking and like, hey, let's make a, a, a show about two killers. One's a girl, one's a guy, and they, they come together eventually and they meet. And then it all formed, like, I had this idea of a, of a strange man that's stalking women that obviously developed into something else, and I had the idea of the killer nurse, and then, you know, Stephanie was like, yeah, I'd kill people. It's kind of organic. I can, I can pretend yeah. to kill people. And the good thing about it is, it, because it has the serial murdering um, um, element, it kind of, kind of, the stories could keep on going for, you know, because there's, you know, numerous victims or possibilities. Forever. Yeah, it's fun and, to build characters through each episode rather than like, you know, have it all written out prior and stuff because it gives us, again, creative freedom to really make make these characters have a lot of depth. And, I, and I'll say this, uh, we are more discovery writers than we are like planning writers. Like a lot, some people will plan out the whole thing, then write it, but we kind of discover things as we go. Like, what about this? What about that? What about this? So there's a lot of places that Harold and Mabel could go. Just say that. Um, our next question is from Kai Lisa Loss 8430 And the question is, will we see episodes of justice for victims of Harold and Mabel? Yes. And no. Tune into season two and you might just see someone you know. That rhymed. I'm proud of that. Keep that. Um, but yeah. Uh, We'll see. I think I think we're gonna do the Dexter method where he just keeps getting away with it in every absurd way possible, and stop it never comes to a resolution. What? I said stop ruining it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying because in Dexter after season four, it's like all right, he's just getting away with everything at this point. It's gonna be really good. Yeah, no, it's gonna definitely come to a it's gonna come to a head, and everyone's gonna be like, wow, I really am rooting for my characters here. If you want to know if there's gonna be justice or if Mabel and Harold are gonna get away with anything or what they get away with, because they're definitely getting away with some stuff, then you should tune in to season two, and every season after. We also want people to empathize with these people, because they are people. Because, you know, it's, it's very easy to hate, like, a Michael Myers or something, because he's behind a mask and he doesn't talk, but, like, when you see the backstory of Harold and Mabel, you could be like, eh, well, I can see how I could become a serial... All right, <laughs> maybe not keep that, but... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Just whose phone is making I sound? It's Chase. it's Chase. No, it's not. I don't have any Mike's. sound on my phone. That's okay. Michael, phone Michael Darinas. Oh. Okay. There's somebody messaging me right now being like, hey, Sorry, you got to cut that because I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Do you want to make your phone stop yes. doing that? Sorry. Thank you. Just give me a right. I just shut the sound off. We don't no, if you guys it. don't be nice to me and I don't feel like I belong here in the Island of Misfit Toys, I will leave. <laughs> okay, here we go. If I can't be accepted here, where can I be? I <laughs> Stephanie, kind of already that. Stephanie sure. that's recording, right? What? That's recording. You just see a red, a red light beeping. It's flashing. Yeah. It's a red light. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll ask the justice for the victim's question. Then, and then I'll ask the Harold one. I guess. Hey, you don't trust her. No. All right. Here we go. Next question. <clears throat> okay. Do you want some water? No. Because you went coughing a lot. Next question. This comes from Crochet World eight two nine five. Hi. I got here from Stephanie Harlow's channel. Will you have holiday-themed cases like New Year's, Valentine's Day, Easter, etc.? Chase, I would um, like, or Chesla. Michael. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's that's the plan. I, you know, I, I think uh, having holiday-themed episodes is really interesting, um, particularly Easter. Um, but I don't want to spoil anything. So but, uh, I wonder if it's going to have something to do with bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> That was actually something, again, we did not plan. It's just we were shooting through the holidays, and we're like, why not for yeah. most of the episodes? But we had a sick idea for a Thanksgiving episode that we could not execute this year, but we will next year. So I can't tell you about it. Did we? Yeah. Yes. yes. It's confidential. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I forgot. Need to know basis. How do you? Yeah. What? We talked about it only 300 times. I know. Why did I forget? What was it again? No, seriously. Oh, <laughs> so when you guys asked about the... Uh, the justice for victims. I think that would be great because um, Alex kind of got horribly murdered. Next question. This one comes from at Holly Rickard 186. What interests you most about your guys' specific characters? Which impacts how you play the role? The backstory of, of Harold is, is very interesting to me. And, and I think once you have a, a solid backstory um, and, and, you know, a, a foundation for why they're doing what they're doing, um, it just makes it so much easier as an actor to, uh, you know, to portray their, you know, their idiosyncrasies. Uh, every, every little detail of, of their personality is easier when you have that, that 
backstory and uh, yeah so I always make sure a, a character has a solid backstory even if even if the script doesn't even if it's not in the script uh, I make a, a backstory and then I run it by the director um, because it's just so important to know where the the character's coming from so you know where 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 they're going you just have to find your missing piece maybe if you'd shave off that beard you could find yourself a good woman and I could die in peace. You're not going to die, Ma. Oh, oh, careful. You don't think those pills are going to save me, right? Just delaying the inevitable. I tell you, they just do enough to keep me hanging on by a thread. Could you just fulfill a dying woman's final wish? And find yourself a good woman? Stop, Ma! Where'd you go? Oh! Do you, do you agree with that, Stephanie? Anything to add? I think that, uh, for me, Mabel is, like, my shadow self. Um, she's probably every single urge that I, that I suppress. And I think every one of us has that in us, right? We have society and we have the rules and regulations that we're supposed to follow in order to be, like, a productive member of this world. And then there's things that you just want to do sometimes. And, and you want to be bad and you want to be evil. And I know everybody is going to be like, oh, I can't believe she's saying. Yes, every single one of you feels the same. And every single one of you feels the same. There's a shadow self in all of us. And it feels very good to let her come out. And that way I don't turn into her in real life. Well, just like Betsy, the, the nosy neighbor. We, we've all had a nosy neighbor, so it's like. I would have taken uh, Betsy yeah. out in real life, man. All right, let's move on. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, this one is from <clears throat> at Terry Azen. Terry A. Zen. Yeah. What is the symbolism of the bunny rabbit? We'll get into it in season two. You'll, yeah, we'll, stay tuned for that one. Yeah. Let's just say this. Harold was yeah. teased very yeah. uh, severely as a well, child. You heard, one of, you heard one of the bullies say rabbit face, rabbit in, face. in uh, episode three. Something really sets off Harold about rabbits. Let's just say that. Um, another question from Terry A. Zen. Is there going to be a gag reel? Absolutely. And BTS. Don't worry. It's coming. Um, she has another question. Is there anything that has gone over our heads as the audience or something we haven't noticed which you feel encompasses a lot of effort and would like to share? Uh, one thing that comes to mind is the little girl that sat on Santa's lap was also the daughter of uh, Yobo, oh, Eric, Eric, Eric Yabowski, who he was wearing his face. Um, uh, you know, there's a, 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 a nod to it when it cuts to him wearing the face. That's the girl. So it's funny to him because Harold recognizes that, oh, I killed her dad. Harold? Harold Neumeister? Dude, it's me, Yobo, Eric Yabowski, from grade school, man. How the hell you been? I'm oh, good. How are you? That I feel like no one really picked up on yet. Uh, is there anything else, guys, that yes, you know? Yes, there's the, uh, um, wait, uh, you're going to have to give me a minute. I had it in my head. <clears throat> Chase, anything you guys got noticed? Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, a lot of people, okay, what was the question again? Anything that's anything? gone over the audience's oh, yes. head. One thing that's gone over the audience's head, I think, when people keep asking who is Mabel talking to, all we're going to say is this. When, when she's on the phone with her father, is her father talking back to her? Daddy, your stupid car broke down. And I had to walk so far in the middle of nowhere by myself to this, like, greasy mechanic shop. Can you come, and please? And can you bring me some money to pay these... People. Hello? Hello, Daddy. Yes. Is she on the phone with anybody? Yes. That's that's all we can say. I think uh uh something I do think has gone over people's head is that Mabel isn't exactly mentally stable and uh there's a lot more going on than she's letting off. So um what's going on in her head is anyone's guess, is what I would say. Uh <laughs> yeah. Next question. I have noticed the modus operandi of the characters, Harold and Mabel, are all, are all over the place. Is this purposely written for the effects crew to tackle different challenges instead of recreating similar scenes? Or is there something more to this? You mean the well, way they <clears throat> kill with different yeah. weapons, different ways of killing? They're yeah. Well, yeah. well, well uh, with, with Harold, uh, a lot of times it's, it's just he's triggered. So it's, it's, it's a random... Whatever's handy. A random circumstance. So it's just, yeah, whatever... 
whatever's around and he just uses what's what's around so because he, he just literally gets triggered in his head so i mean the answer is yes we want to yeah. keep it interesting yeah. with different kills and different ways to challenge blank del rosa here so yeah. we're always keeping him on his toes like the bowling pin that harold you know uses the bowling pin and then it you know yeah actually it, season uh well season one episode six with mabel Remember, we were going to shoot most of it outside, and we kind of, the whole thing was an audible. Oh, the bowling yeah. alley one, yeah. Yeah, and like a lot of that came together with the security footage, and we're like, she's a security guard, why not have security footage of her getting choked? Yeah, we, black and we white basically CCT. did that whole episode on the fly. Yeah, 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 that was all kind of. And it was a good episode. And that's what's fun about the series, is we always are rolling with the punches, you know, a location doesn't work out, it's cold outside and raining, you weren't expecting that, well figure it out and it's not that much stress because it's not a big production mm -hmm. so we learn to adjust on the fly um I, I would say as far as their modus operandi that's a good word that's a good phrase i would say uh mabel's a little more clean and precise with her kills that you see her with a knife you see her uh you know sneaking behind someone choking them or choking someone out with the handcuffs uh she sneaks back into the garage and kills the people and she's very calculated while harold is just kind of a basher it's like, oh, a bowling pin, I'm going to bash your head in a rock, um, a mallet, like anything he can grab. He's not really thinking about it. It's like just a caveman. Yeah. Kind of. It's like just in the moment type thing. Harold doesn't really plan his kills. He just yeah. kind of overreacts. Actually, the episode take. seven where we lit the thing on fire, that was a last minute decision too, where we built a scarecrow an hour before we shot that scene, and I was really happy with how it came out. He was really happy. It, it was uh, actually, yeah, Vince and Mike were making it as I was shooting them in the car, so it's, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, just, it's, a, it's a good working... Yeah. Loop. The body that. looks so real. I actually so got inspiration from Michael running around naked in the woods <laughs> with blood on him from American Werewolf in London. We're like, how can we just put something in there like that? And we're like, well, this kind of works, and it worked. Yeah, it just pops out. Like, <laughs> the body looks so real. I was trying to like to add. Oh, I'm sorry. It did uh, though. It really did. It looked real for really a bunch did. of. Yeah. Uh, she has like, trust me, I've seen it was so deep. many. That oh, one looks so real. Okay, so here's a question <laughs> here. Uh, for the special effects, what was the aim and goal <laughs> with this project? What were your favorite special effects and why? Hmm. A, a lot of them are just spontaneous. I mean, they're kind of like like much like the production itself it's kind of you kind of make it up as you go along having a body of experience i i'm you know used to that um but as far as like what would be the favorite huh well it depends um but the body burn was a good one because again that was made from nothing on the moment um some of the blood gags or the chainsaw in the in the basement was was decent i like that one yeah um you know, again, a lot of these effects uh, rise from just necessity. It's it's kind of like you know, you know, pull it out and you know from somewhere and do it. And uh, I like the brain matter you made for the bowling ball. Oh right, yeah, and that was you know, I'm mean, something like that. It's just grabbing like napkins from <laughs> from the counter over here and soaking it in blood and whatever. But because um, it looked like real flesh and it was like gelatinous kind of. Yeah, mm. yeah. Again, that comes from years of having to work on low budget productions or whatever and. and you know, working on the fly. Um, but um, hopefully within season two, maybe we'll, we'll, you know, be able to ante up and start, uh, you know, bringing more effects heavy stuff into it. We'll see. Yeah. To go off that same question, it was, um, as far as the special effects and the sound design, um, which has been of the highest quality and has been a huge part of the overall enjoyment. Uh, I, I like over the top sound effects. Uh, you know, I want to hear the crunching and the bashing. And, and, I, and I feel like a lot of times if you're not outright showing it, Sometimes hearing it is even worse mm -hmm. because uh, your mind will put it all together like, oh, that sounds horrific. So, um, yeah, that, that's something I like. I like it when it's a little bit exaggerated because it, it kind of adds to the over-the-top over element of the series. And, yeah, I mean, I, you know, you can, you can achieve a lot with sound effects and spraying blood on someone's face. Yeah, so sound is such a, such a big piece of, of getting a point across, obviously. But I mean, when it, enhancing a, a sound to, to make something, you know, appear worse than it is. Um, I know it's a strange medium to use sound, but I mean, for sound, uh, enhancing an effect is, is, makes it much better. Sometimes it doesn't work, and then we have to vote. Like mm. the uh, Harold and the and the young woman in the car. Oh, yeah. And James, <laughs> James was yeah. outvoted on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was good, though. <laughs> okay, this question comes from at Tangerine 
Skies, 22. Stephanie, do you think your in-depth knowledge on so many true crime cases has helped you channel the energy needed to portray a character like Mabel? Similarly, has portraying a character like Mabel changed the way you study your cases you cover? Um, so I've always been interested in very dark things since I was young. Having to learn the psychology behind sociopaths, psychopaths, narcissistic personality disorder, stuff like that, that has helped in building the character, honing that in. Um, what was the second part? Has portraying a character like Mabel changed your way, changed the way you study your cases? No. No. Um, in fact, like, I'm very, I'm very unempathetic to killers, and anybody who watches my videos knows that I really don't have a ton of, of empathy for people who murder other people. Um, I don't have a ton of, I don't, I have zero empathy for anybody who hurts children or animals, right? Wait, are you empathetic towards Mabel? Probably not. What about Harold? No. I mean, in general, yes, because they're not real. Oh, they're real. They're not real. Based on that's true the, That's stories. the difference. Like, so yes, it, when you're watching a film, like Vince said, we want you to feel empathy for these people. And when he said these people, he didn't specify whether you, we, he wants you to feel empathy for Harold and Mabel or the victims. In general, good filmmaking is you, you feel empathy for everybody, right? These are not black and white characters. They all have texture to them. They have backgrounds. They're not just evil and, or, or evil or good. You know, there's a little bit of everything. In real life, however, I have no empathy for killers, as you all probably know. Uh, do I have empathy for Mabel and Harold? Yeah, because I know them and they're not real. That's the fun part about this series is we can make the character either go to audience needs to feel empathy for this person. And then go right back to, I hate Harold, someone needs to stop him before he kills the whole town. Or before he does something really bad, but he already has. But that's what's fun, we can keep going back and forth and play with the audience like minds. And that's actually what we've been talking about a lot for season two is, we really want to make Harold a dark force that is just purely and simply evil. He's not, though. I know. He's not. I would say, but. if anything, if we haven't lost you guys with Mabel, then there's nothing she can do that you won't like. Because Heather was such a good soul, just wanted to take care of Harold's mother, and Mabel just chokes her out. Oh, she wants so the annoying. job. Heather's so annoying, though. Right? right. Like, obnoxious. Wait, was, she was, me... like, such a goody two-shoes. Can't stand it. She told on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She okay. Did. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, I by the way, the, the victim in that episode... Dude, you killed Santa. ...was Chad's mom. You killed Santa. <laughs> that was my mom. You yeah. murdered. You killed Christmas. Yeah. We, we want the victims of Harold to see him as just this dark predator, mm. but you know as the audience that he necessarily isn't. Uh, I have a good question here. This is actually for Vince and I. It says, I would like to know what challenges and hurdles we've encountered in regards to cinematography and what we think are the most artistic and difficult shots or scenes that we've accomplished. As far as a lighting standpoint, Vince would probably say uh, shooting at Harold's house is difficult because when you're shooting in an actual house, it's not set up for camera and lighting, so you kind of have to maneuver around things. Uh, when you're on a set, you know, it's specifically made for it, but this is a real house and this is her real stuff and we don't want to damage anything and sometimes we can't get lights where we want them to be. And these so. are sacrifices that we... That we make. The filmmaking that we make, and it's the same with camera and stuff too. There's, of course, we'd love to set up dolly shots and stuff, but for time's sake and stuff, we need to move the camera. And sometimes it comes out better than it would have if we set up forever. So, yep. That's the only thing that I was going to add is it, it kind of dictates the the format dictates kind of like how you you do, do the setups, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, even yeah, that's actually, kind of in, in the sense that it's free flowing, and, and if an idea comes up, then suddenly you got to change your lighting and change your exactly. Like Half the time we haven't seen the location prior, so sometimes we get there and we're like, oh, okay, I have to contend with this heater that keeps going on, or the the certain light lighting that I don't know the temperature <laughs> of, or how do I unplug this or do that without making the location manager you know upset and or breaking anything. Yeah, yeah right. that's the biggest thing. That, yeah, that's a big thing for Mike, too. It's, uh, you know, what are the difficulties you run into effects-wise where you can't make a mess or destroy, you know, property? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's 
you know, <laughs> one of the things you try to avoid as much as possible. But, um, you know, I try to minimize and shift around a little bit to kind of, you know, keep the blood, you know, under a minimum or outside or, you know, <laughs> so it doesn't spray on anything valuable, you know. Um, but uh, it has to bleed at some point. You know? Uh, actually, uh, another question for uh, Michael here. Okay. Has playing Harold changed your view on serial killers in any way? No, I mean, like I said, I, I think um, a, a lot goes back to, you know, their childhood. Well, there's the whole nature versus nurture argument, you know, which has a stronger influence on how someone turns out. And I personally feel that, you know, nurture plays a, a greater a, a greater influence on, on someone's behavior rather than, you know, someone's bi biological makeup. So, um so I, I think as far as is Harold... think that serial killers are nurtured into being serial killers? And no, well, just the environment, with... how the environment, you know, maybe they had an abusive childhood or, or something. So, but, so... but millions of people have abusive childhoods and don't turn into No, you're right. Killers. Well, sometimes... So is it possibly that they have a personality disorder? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or there's well, something wrong with their brain? I think a lot of times it's both. And, like and that's what really... Like personality came... disorder is developed by it... trauma throughout your life. Yeah. Well, we don't really know, right? But that's we the do well, know. That's the, that's but, the argument. Well, the argument. But we do know mm -hmm. some things scientifically, like serial killers have smaller amygdala, part amygdala, of the yeah, amygdala, amygdala, yeah. which is the decision making, yeah. your impulse control. We know that. Isn't right? that the, what's the, the amygdala? The um, dual amygdala or something? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Medula, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. The medula. Okay. Medu well, it's no, but the um, lack of empathy for yeah. sure. Well, if I could yeah. add my, my two cents, but who am I? I would say this. I think it's very hard for people to rationalize the fact that there is just evil in this world. Some people are just born bad. You know, some souls, or even just maybe a couple thousand years ago, or even in the caveman days, there was a need for those type of people where, hey, this is just a brutal, evil person. Yeah. In modern day society, that doesn't really, it's not necessary. And in the society that we've created it, as humans, these people don't necessarily belong. You know, people that have that inclination to kill and murder and don't feel the empathy for it are probably people back in the day that they'd send off to go conquer land. And, yeah. and, and you know, that's, it's just not welcome in our society. I, I, I think it's the perfect storm of, you know, a bad upbringing, you know, and environmental factors combined with, it's 50 -50. Um, yeah. you know, combined with a predisposition biologically that, that really sets someone over the edge. So I ask you this. Do you think Harold has that predisposition, or do you think he was nurtured into it? Oh. Well, I, I think both, and, and, I, and I think in, in season two, if not season three, or however far we go with it, we okay. can explore further his, you know, his parents, you know, when he was a child, and, and, and which one had a greater effect on him, his environment or the, that's, his that's biology. That's actually that, uh, what we're trying to do with Mabel and Harold to separate them yeah. is Mabel's this way because of what happened to her. And Harold maybe is just yeah maybe it's a genetic thing maybe yeah. you know his father yeah. was well we'll get in we don't they're similar too much, but they but, are different yeah so it's probably more biological it's more biological with Harold and it's more environmental with uh, n nurture with with uh, Mabel no nah, Mabel was born broken. I don't know, man. She watched her I mean, yeah. mom kill her yeah. dad in front of her. She was just a sweet little girl yeah. trying to sleep. Actually, uh, yeah, but again, yeah. That's, actually, that's after actually, she was, you know, growing up. That's, uh, actually, I'm you know, sorry, I screwed up everything. The, wait, Mabel, no, is Mabel is a serial killer because it's yeah. hereditary. Yeah. Her mother was mentally ill. So, and when you're going through, which we don't know yet, but when you're going through those formative years in a child's brain and something traumatic like that happens, yeah. it changes your brain structure, right? So yeah. it's not even so much of an environmental thing. It's just like you're being programmed uh -huh. to to not have empathy and to think that violence like this is is completely normal because it's happening in your bedroom with your parents in your home where you sw where you should feel safest <laughs>
not done with ha Mabel's mother, by the way. Oh, yeah, you'll see more of Mabel's father and her mother, and there's more backstory to be told. Um, a, a quick question for you, Michael. Was there any killers or any inspirations that you pulled from to create Harold in your head or, you know, just the way you portray him? Well, as far as, like, um, you know, his mannerisms and, and like, his wardrobe, that, that's kind of, like, Dahmer-ish, I, I think. But, um, no, I mean, I, I didn't really try and imitate any, you know, serial killer. Um, I just wanted to establish a backstory and then just go from there. It, you know, the character takes on a life of its own once you establish the backstory. So, um, Harold was, you know, had a traumatic childhood from being bullied. So he's this insecure, you know, he's, he's unsure of himself. Easily triggered. Yeah. And he's, and he's, he doesn't know how to deal with his anger. So he just, you know, he, he just basically blacks out and kills people uh, on the, at the spur of the moment. So does he feel bad about it after? Yes, yes, he does. Um, like, so, like, a, f a couple of the times, like, when I'm driving after I killed, uh, in the first episode, I I'm, I'm crying, I'm, I'm angry, I'm, you know, so he goes through all these emotions. He just doesn't know what he, he's just emotionally, you know, unregulated and, uh... Mabel does yeah. not feel bad. No, okay. yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Big question to you, Stephanie. Did you pull, uh, any inspiration from any of the cases or any of the people that you studied? to create Mabel or to, you know, really channel some certain energy. A lot of the comments would say that you are channeling uh, Shabao, Shabash, what's her name? Taylor Shabash or something? Taylor Shabusiness? Shabusiness. <laughs> uh, either one, that sounds even more stupid than what I said. <laughs> uh, so did you, a lot of people would say you pulled from uh, t Taylor Shabusiness or, um, I don't know, Jody, uh, Jody, Jody Arias? Jody Arias, <laughs> Casey Anthony. Yeah, yeah. But a lot Someone of said you look said... like Jody Arias. Yeah. You ever seen her before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, actually, I didn't. Um, I think, I don't know, I've always been drawn to the bad guy in every film, every book I've ever read. I'm drawn to the bad guy, which is funny because in real life I don't have any empathy, but I think that life imitates art. And wait, wait, art, in real life you don't have any empathy? In real life I don't have empathy for killers. You might want to clarify that. You should clarify Can that. Can I finish? Telling your audience you don't have any empathy. <laughs> <laughs> In real life, I kill people. Listen, okay. life imitates art, but art gives us a chance to actually, there's there's not a lot on the line, right? So you, you don't have to um, really put yourself in anyone's shoes. You can act as a true observer, a true unbiased observer when you're watching a movie or reading a book. And I've always been drawn to people who kind of are evil and, you know, I want to see that, that three-dimensionally fleshed out and... I, like I said, it's just there is a there is a an evil part or a mean person in all of us, and I just pull from the one inside of me. Mabel is me. This question is from Punk Chick Two Nine Seven. Are the killers going to be romantic together or go toe to toe with each other? I could be either. You'll that to, is up for grabs. You'll have to stay tuned. You'll have to stay tuned to see that. Uh, you can leave in the comments though what you would rather see. Do you want to see Harold and Mabel fall in love, or would you rather see them? In a bloody battle to the end. We will see. Well, Mabel can't fall in love because she's empty inside, but she can pretend to fall in love so that she can get what she needs from other people, like Harold. That noise she is needs a place to stay. She needs a place to stay. <clears throat> and, and Harold's just looking for a good girl. Needs a job. Harold's looking for Her a good Harold's woman. Harold's mother wants him yeah. to find a nice woman so she can die in peace. <laughs> Um, so this this is just a comment. Charlie B says, All of the actors do an amazing job. The guy who plays Harold is so good at it. That is because Michael is uh, a, a weird serial killer in real life. Um, this question is from at Luzmila Lucy H nine two eight six. What was the process of picking the actors? They were perfect for the roles they played. So, um, believe it or not, Michael here is actually a very handsome guy. Under all that, um, I think that adds to it because mm -hmm. someone even left a comment. They said uh, Harold actually is uh, very cute with his big blue eyes and his little button nose. <laughs> and, you know, adding the beard and, like, the crazy hair and the hat and all that and the glasses, it makes him seem crazier, but there's also a, a, a loving part of him where you feel bad. So... He's, like, gentle, kind of, which is weird. Yes, and he's, he's very soft-spoken. So Vince and I, you know, we, we love Michael here, and we first met him, and we try to make him this cool characters, but then we realized that he really, uh, he really excels in playing the weirdo. So I think it was, it was him no matter what. Like, that's exactly who it was written for. Um, as yeah, far as there was no debate, there wasn't. <laughs> um, and, and as far as Mabel goes, we actually auditioned a lot of people. Um, some were great, some were not. And ultimately, uh, Stephanie, she won the role. Uh, she really. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, so Mabel, Mabel was written for Stephanie as well. And 
Uh, we we did uh we did um the offering with her and her playing a scared girl didn't necessarily seem fitting to her. And when we came up with Mabel as the killer nurse, it really felt right for Stephanie. And I think I think it's definitely I've been pro- we've been proven right on that. And I think Stephanie has really really fall into the character. You can see the progression as episodes go on that she starts to feel a lot more comfortable. And, and, and I think right now she really has become Mabel herself. And um, I think that we're all happy about that. <laughs> so, anyway, so yeah, that's um, that's really our process. Uh, Vince, you got anything to add to that? No. Oh, as far as picking like other actors that are in it, like when Chad was her co-worker, um, like Chad kind of has one of those, like it would piss you off if he like was a jerk to you kind of faces. So we're like, you know, let's kill Chad. Um, that was weird because Chad is a very soft-spoken guy. Yeah. So am I. But uh, he played a dick pretty good. Yeah, he though. played yeah. like James showed me his audition for that guy when he laughed at her for being fired, and I was like, "That was Chad," because it didn't show your face for yeah, some right. reason. Your audition was only from the neck down. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I didn't neck believe down. him. I was like, "Chad doesn't sound like was this." Was his audition really only from the neck down? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was naked as well. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even say anything. Well, you should have known it was. Chad, I was like, he's got the part. He has a size sixteen shoe, so <laughs> that's why from the neck time. Couldn't fit it all in the lungs. Really. <laughs> also, uh, Mike Mike Del Rosa here will be making an appearance. Uh, we have to, we're finding a character for him as well. Um, if you remember, he was a cop in Halloween Inferno. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, picking all the actors, it was a lot of these actors, if not all of them, we know them and we know what they're capable of, and a lot of them brought great ideas and they brought their talent to the series which has been great like uh betsy the neighbor uh we've worked with lauren for years and i told her like you're an obnoxious neighbor that's pushy and she came with the 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 funny headband the Mm -hmm. the jogger outfit and really just nailed that annoying neighbor same thing with trina Trina. um amy that's amy adams she came and she had she she threw ideas at me like hey can i talk like this i could bring uh the pants suit and all that or the that was a really good job by uh amy Mm -hmm. amy being the annoying social worker and then Lauren being the annoying neighbor, Lauren really had to uh, become a different character than Amy when we kind of wrote them similarly. And she did a good job of that because, like, nobody got confused thinking that was the same person that like, we feared. Yeah, she did a great job really making it her own instead of... Because, you know, the, Trina and the neighbor, Betsy, could have very much blended into the same thing, but... Personally, yeah. James and I, our favorite episode is uh, episode 9, where... Harold's House of Horrors. Harold pushes a neighbor down the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Just had to put that out there to hurt uh, Stephanie's feelings. I don't have feelings. Hey, okay, this <laughs> question is from Sarah Hugh Banks, 6393. What are each of the actors' favorite scenes and why? I don't know. There's so many scenes. Um, uh, I think the Halloween episode was probably my favorite. Um, you know, just, just you know, like the, the wardrobe. You just, just, you know... Everything we did from getting egged and, you know, cutting off the face. And, and there's so much little minor details in, in, in that episode and in all the episodes. And, uh, but but uh, I'd say the Halloween episode was probably my favorite. And also the, the previous episode. What, to scene? That, the, what scene was your favorite? Um, probably the end, the ending, uh, the ending wearing, wearing uh, uh, Eric Yabowski's face. So That's what's that's, fun about this series is like I'll always remember shooting yeah. that episode near Halloween. Yeah. More than I'll even remember Halloween because that was like it was Halloween. Like we had the kids trick or treating. We had yeah. the, all the, all the, leaves, the leaves. All the neighborhood kids were like out yeah. and like people were just like, "What decorated. are you guys doing?" It's, yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, fun. it was. It was. Yeah, it was. And like I said, the one the one line was improvised. You know, I made it myself, and then. And then it took like an hour to finally get the shot because, you know, we couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, she the actually has a got two-part. pizza. They were all, we were all hanging out in the front yard. Yeah. It was fun. We've had a lot of fun with this. Uh, that's actually a two-part question. The other part of that was what was the most difficult part to play and why? So what was the most difficult scene for you, Michael? Uh, oh, um, uh, well, obviously the, the mallet the mallet scene was the most <laughs> difficult. So <laughs> what did you tell us? Uh, that's, that's not a- acting? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, and I quote, I'm an actor. Wait. Yeah, I forgot what he said. Something like, I'm an actor, not a baseball player. I don't know. Something well, that's like, not the question, though. I yeah. mean, that's, that's Yeah, what like was phys- hard, like, physically hard? No, no, hard well, well the, the main problem was I, the glasses that I wear to play Harold, they're not mine. Um, so they're very they're very thick, and uh, I really can't see anything out of them. So I had that, then I had the mask on, and I really I really couldn't see. Um, so Yeah, but aside from that, what yeah. was your hardest part to, like, when you were crying, when you were screaming? Like, what would that? I think that's what they mean. Yeah, perhaps something mental, not yeah. physical. Oh, um, 
I don't know. Hmm. He's like, none of it's hard, man. I yeah, I mean, what about hopping down so. the bunny trail? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, man. okay, well, well that, that was, was meant phys- physical. Uh, yeah, that was physical, yeah, yeah. He, you were out of breath. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but you were not hopping and... Yeah, hopping like a rabbit is he was hopping like five feet. Yeah, high, man. And, we, and we did multiple takes <laughs> of it too, so, like fifty yards. Yeah, that was the only workout he and, got. And and yeah, because uh, you know I like to be I like to be my character, so I wasn't working out and or his pants were pulled up to his neck. Yeah, so yeah, so one thing I wanted to do for Harold was you know I normally go to the gym a lot, so I wasn't going to the gym. I was you know my diet wasn't dialed back in, so sure. I just I just so I wanted to be Harold, so. Um, as much as possible, so I wanted to live the character. So, are there any um, similarities between you and Harold? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I do. I think <laughs> there are. <laughs> <laughs> right, like if you had your glasses on right now and you're talking to the camera, everybody would think you were just Harold. Oh, all right. Well, see, so you sure. sound like I him mean, too. You got the beard. You got the voice. The real question is, do you wear uh, those shoes normally all the time, though? No. No? Okay. And do you murder people? <laughs> that would that no. be the real question. Stephanie, the same question back to you is, uh, what was your favorite scene to shoot and why, and what was the most difficult scene to shoot and why? Um, I think that, I don't know, my most favorite? I really did have fun doing the Christmas episode. That was fun, even though my, my tongue was bleeding from trying to turn a candy cane into a shank. Um, you did a good job. Thank you so much. That was my ID, by the way. No, yep. what? Dude, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I can pull up the text message. Pull it out, prove it right now. All oh, right, you go, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so those, uh, I think, you know, all of the kill scenes for me are fun. I liked the pumpkin patch scene. I liked... Did you like uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I did. And I liked uh, choking Kara in the car. That was really fun. I really enjoyed that one, actually. I wish I could have pulled harder, but she said I was hurting her, so I had to. She pawned her nose pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Steering when wheel. I hit her, when I let her head go into the mm. steering wheel. Yeah. Sorry. She My went, bad, Kara. She went all nose. Um, the hardest thing for me, honestly, the hardest thing for me in this series was watching my daughter be choked by Harold, choked to death by Harold, and then seeing her like play this lifeless body. She did a great job. She did a great job because she looked at, like an absolute rag doll, but that was difficult because that was that's my daughter. And um, uh, besides that, for me, playing at probably when I had to cry in the diner because I don't usually cry in public in a public place, and that was weird. But other than that, it's pretty. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Uh, I, I, we also uh, shout out to uh, Nev that um, she did a great job. We also we cast her because she was the perfect size to be used like a rag doll because she's very tiny in real yeah. life. Um, she's not like Stephanie, who's like six three. She's like four eight. <laughs> I think she's four eleven. She's four eleven. So she, you know, she was just very. It was very easy for Michael to just kind of swing her around, and she did very good at just kind of being like limp. So thank you. Nev. Neve. Blackwell. Oh, yeah. See, I was also exhausted prior to doing the bunny hop because I was Like, it was all 80 pounds Neve, of Neve, yeah. yeah. Well, we did multiple takes. So. Uh, what did Nev say about that afterwards? How did she feel the next day? She, well, she was sore. Yeah. <laughs> she said she felt sore because I, I assume you would have to when you're, like, limp oh, yeah. like that and somebody's just, like, yeah. you know, moving yeah, your body like around. <laughs> I was sore, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that's, yeah. yeah, his back was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The next question is... From at the Rose Life, my name is Rose, and I'm hooked on the series. Question for the cast: How do you prepare yourself to get into these dark characters? Um, well, for me, um, that that's my my uh, that's my specialty is is playing dark characters. I, I was the uh, cult leader in the Burned Over District, uh, the feature film that we did prior to this, and uh, I, I'm just always I always gravitate towards the the uh, antagonists. So for me, it's just something that I, I love doing and uh, something I'm, I'm best at, playing the dark characters. Oh, my turn? Yep. Um, I would say that what I do for work is very dark, and I do that all day, every day, so I never leave that dark place. So it's very easy to just stay there. I wish that I knew how to get out of it. 
Moving on. Um, this is for the <laughs> Michael Del Rosa. What is your favorite gag, and how did you pull it off? Hmm. Special effects gag. I yeah, know. yeah, this was. It's supposed to work. I know, right? Well, no, no, I, I wasn't I, going to. Yeah, I was it. saying for the camera. They don't yeah, know what yeah, a gag is. Exactly, right? Mike, what was your favorite special effect that you pulled off in the series? Yeah. And how did you do it? Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I would say the mallet effect, but that didn't quite. Uh, I didn't translate. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, no. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know what? I guess the face The face so far was, was fun. You know, and that was, you know, and I think that was more a case of Mike coming up with some, you know, I made it myself line and kind of, it, it could have been a gag where it was just a gag, you know, and then, uh, you know, you turned it into something that was a moment. Yeah. Um, and then turn, turning really fast so that it would jiggle. Yeah, the, j the jiggling of the skin. And the you know what's funny about this, though? Like, scenes like that, that we were laughing, we were laughing our heads off. Yeah. And then we were like, this is going to be so funny. And then we edit, edit the thing, and we're like, this is actually just kind of disturbing. Turns out yeah. to be quite chilling. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah the, the bunny hop, too. Okay, yeah, the bunny hop. The bunny hop, we thought was going to be hilarious. I know. And it was yeah. very, like, chilling. Yeah. Comedy and horror are, are actually pretty close. I They're mean, cousins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you guys, yeah. like, watch behind the um, scenes, it's really funny. Maybe the maybe the burn body, too, because that was just something that we did. And it, it, that, that, again, was more kind of just positioning the camera properly and putting it where it, where it looks like something it wasn't. Because it was literally just clothing stuff with leaves and being yeah. on fire. That's pretty much. <laughs> but um, that was a, a, a run to the Goodwill the night before, and some duct tape and some leaves yep. that were under uh, Chad's mom's tree. Yeah. Um, what about the way you guys uh, did the uh, fog in the opening with him running in the woods? Oh, uh, that was um, the fire oh, extinguisher. The fire extinguisher, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. A white powder that kind of like floated in the air. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of used that for, for That's cool. smoke. That's always something I wanted to capture on film. Like, if you wake up at, like, 5.30 in the morning and you see that, like, fog. Yeah. fog it's yeah. just, like, we've never been able to actually film that. But yeah. Maybe uh, season two. One of these questions here is uh, for Vince and I. It says, uh, for the story writers, what inspires you to write these stories? Now, that actually goes for, you know, everyone's had input on this. It's not just him and I. Or it's not just Vince and I. Like, everyone has had little ideas or input here. Uh, I think a lot of the times, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, He's ten times the writer than he's actor. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times with me, it's like I have this idea, and I, I can't explain it. it. It's not anything I really think about. It's all of a sudden it's there, and I'm like, this would be a good idea. This would be a good idea. And, and with Serial, every episode just kind of kept coming into my head, or Vince. And that's when you know it's the right thing to make. And uh, when you're not forcing it, and you're like, oh, this sounds like it would work. This would work really good. I got a really great idea. Instead of having to sit there and think what's next, what's next. I, that's why I say I'm a discovery writer. The ideas just kind of come in my head sometimes. Um, and sometimes we run out of ideas, and then Michael yeah. will come up to us with some ideas or Chad. Yeah, Chad or stuff. Chad, or... Mike Del Rosa, we always uh, yeah. talk with him. Uh, he's always got little goofy things. It's uh, the thing with uh, Michael uh, Chesla here, uh, Harold, is he's always got an input on everything, uh, even the smallest thing. And if you if you hear him out for longer than five minutes, you'll have ten episodes on your on your hand. And um, yeah, so it's fun. It's a fun collaborative effort. Uh, we want to thank you guys all for watching it. It's been a lot of fun making it. We really love interacting with you guys. Um, we definitely want to try to get a little event going where you guys can all meet Harold and Mabel, get a poster um, signed by Harold and Mabel. Um, there's also a link that we will put in the end of this video that you can buy a poster, buy a, a Blu-ray of it. You know, uh, a Blu-ray of the entire serial series that'll have this Q and A in it Special as well. Special edition collector's items. Yeah, signed. it'll be signed, signed by Harold and Mabel. Yeah. Uh, I'll sign it too uh, if you care. Gag reel. I'd have a gag reel behind the scenes. That'll be priceless right there. So itself. I think so too. Yeah. So guys, uh, again, uh, shoe. <laughs> you can sign shoe. Sign shoe by Chad. <laughs> 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 And then maybe on that DVD we get to explain that joke as well. But yeah. Oh my God. Uh, so Chad wears a size 16 shoe. <laughs> say no more. That's all I need to say. <laughs> That's all you got. No. Ladies, he's single. Show, <laughs> show us the shoe, Chad. Well, well, shout so, out to Chad's it, shoe. It won't fit on camera. <laughs> we gotta do it sideways. Wide uh, put it up, put it up on the Wait, <laughs> there is one last question that I did forget to ask. It's by at MSC8663. What causes you two to go on a killing spree? Well, well, well how do they know we're going on a killing spree? 
You guys know. haven't killed like 13 people altogether. It's not technically a killing well, spree. Well, Her Harold is just triggered by the moment, so um, as I've discussed before, he's, he's triggered by the moment, so he just off the cuff, you know, spontaneous kill and whatever's around, a rock, a bowling pin. We wanted to make it seem like Harold maybe has done this before. So like in the first episode, you're being introduced to what Harold does. Yes. And Mabel, episode two, you're seeing this is the first person that she's done this to. Oh, uh, no, she's been killing people as a nurse. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a dumb man. <laughs> <laughs> I just leaked that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I would say that here's a, a good question that I think the audience wants to know. Here's a debate, and this is a question for Michael and Stephanie. If it were to come down to a physical battle between Harold and Mabel, who would come out the victor? Me. <clears throat> me. I would, I, would, I would kill him in a second, and he would have feelings for me, so he would be less able to do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. would intellectually probably disarm him. No, I would just murder him because no, but, he would. No, I mean, pause, once you've you intellectually know? disarmed, yeah, yeah. Like when you're, like well, when you're gonna go and like kill somebody, even if you're defending yourself. Let's say I yeah. attack him; he's defending himself against me. He still has feelings for me. There's something human in him still that's gonna. Yeah, yeah, she's make right. Him take yeah. a beat, right? You and in that time, he might, I'm going might to... flip his switch too. You never right. know, and just you know, overpower What if you him? can't kill him? Wait, can we explain no. what feelings you think Harold has for? What you? if he can't die? I don't know what feelings he has for me, but I know he will. <laughs> Why do you think that? Because. <laughs> what if Harold well, can't die? <laughs> uh, Harold, <laughs> what? what was it like seeing Mabel for the first time? Well, no, here, Harold did, does find her to be attractive, so um, I, I think she's right. I think he would be uh, disarmed uh, emotionally, and then and then she probably she would have the upper hand for sure in, in a battle, I think. You don't know. But I could, I could be triggered. There could be something. What right, if Harold know? is possessed by Michael Myers? Yeah. I'm Mabel. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, I was reading this very interesting article about the difference between male sociopaths and female sociopaths. And this is evolutionary. It's very interesting why female sociopaths are more manipulative. They use their looks to get their way. They manipulate people and they can put on the same superficial charm and they can really make you make you feel like they have feelings for you, convince people that they do, but they don't. And that's why female sociopaths are actually a lot more malignant and like dangerous than male sociopaths even, because they blend in and they chameleon in. And this is why women are sometimes so mean to each other, right? Because there's this constant pecking order that they're trying to... Anyways, it's very interesting. Um, but I think that if Mabel is a true female sociopath, which I believe her to be, there's no nobody who can stop her. So what you're nope. saying is that she's ready, willing. Men to are kinder than women, and women are meaner than. No, them. I said male <laughs> sociopaths are more violent, whereas female sociopaths are more clever about are more manipulative. Yeah. So they're they're more under the radar. You don't see them coming. They're poisoners. Too. Whereas a male sociopath, you might feel something's off about this person. Like some part of your lizard brain might be like, ah. This person has kind of antisocial and you know, kind of like kind of like James. You know, you might feel something's wrong with them, and you'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> but with a female sociopath, they're so good at disguising their intentions because they don't have the physical violence ability. They don't have the physical strength. They can't really defend themselves or attack in that way. They have to sort of get close to you so they can really drive the knife in. So in a boxing match, who would win, Harold or Mabel? Harold. Okay. Uh, Harold, what, what about certain women or people draws you to kill them, do you think? Does Harold have a type that he likes, physically, in a female? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I would say yes. Well, I mean, I mean right, what the, the redheaded, I mean, like, apparently redheads. Harold redheads. likes fair-skinned, yeah. redheaded women. Um, You know, if you notice, the first girl that he kills is a fair-skinned girl with red hair. Uh, Nev, Stephanie's daughter, is a fair-skinned girl with red hair. Um, the working girl is a fair-skinned girl. She doesn't have red hair, but Harold, he's okay with that because he was killing her anyways. Um, yeah, uh, you know, if you notice that his new uh, employer at the Santa Claus School also has fair skin and reddish hair, so yeah. yeah. 
she's uh you know Harold he likes what he likes and um, <laughs> that's it. Does, does Mabel have any real like things she focuses on or just people that just kind of upset her a little? Yeah, I think she uh she just doesn't want anybody to tell her what to do. She doesn't want anybody to stop her. She doesn't want she she has what she knows what she wants to do, and anybody who gets in her path becomes an obstacle she has to remove. Does Mabel hate mechanics? I think Mabel hates everybody. Mabel hates herself. So you don't think that she really was, she didn't really like that Harold was Santa? She didn't find it charming? She was just... No, she's manipulating him. She's using him and she's charming him to get into the yeah. job. So it was so nice seeing you again, Mr. Mm. Meister. Uh, you can call me Harold. All right. Well, I'll see you around then, Harold. Would you like to take a picture? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I get up there. Alright, you yeah, like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Smile. Alright, you're all set. Thank you, Santa. Have <laughs> <laughs> a Merry right. Christmas. Alright. Happy Christmas. And then she's gonna and that's what she's done for survival since she was a kid, right? Living with her mother you know, dealing with the dynamics between her mother and her father, having to always be yeah. the one in the middle, having to always make sure everybody was okay. And you have to do some, you know, you have to wear a mask sometimes. And now she's under investigation for, uh, you know, the mysterious deaths at the, the hospital she worked at. So now she can't really get a, a job yeah. uh, because they do a background check. So she needs this job. I really do. Taking care of Harold's mother, so. And, and we don't think that uh, Harold would be very thorough in looking through Mabel's history. So, Because yeah. he's desperate for a caregiver yeah. because he is getting, yeah. you know, adult protective yeah. services up his ass. So he has to... Yeah. He doesn't want to lose his mother, you know. That's uh, the only thing he's got left in this world. That's the only thing anchoring him to a uh, semblance of normality. And he doesn't want people to suspect him of being a serial killer because the adult protective services person did say, like, oh, your neighbor yeah. says you're going out all hours of the night. So now he's getting kind of triggered there. And he's like, wait, people are watching me. I'm not going as under the radar as I thought I was. This is stressing him out. So he tries to, you know, incorporate a, a normal structure in his life by getting a job. Mabel and um, Harold propose a solution for each other. Yeah. Yes. So then Harold could continue his... Uh, I think Harold does mean well, though. I don't think Harold actually sits there and contemplates murder as much as Mabel might. I think Harold does things out of a reactionary yeah. kind of sense. And uh, while Mabel, again, is more calculated, she's a little bit more precise. She kills a certain way, you know, knives, joking. Uh, yeah, she knows what she's doing. She, she knows all. Oh, she see. studied anatomy in, in college just to kill. Maybe I'm just naughty. <laughs> While Harold, you know, he just, he's just doing his best. He's just trying, and what we're all doing, we're all just trying to make it, you know? Mabel's trying to make it too, man. She just has a different set of, like, tools. Yes. Don't judge her. Is there any more questions? I, no, that was no. it for questions. Now we're oh, just okay. rambling. I so, uh, <laughs> yeah, did you have anything? Final oh, words? Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think if uh, people were nicer to Harold and stopped calling him a freak, they might actually live a bit longer. There but not go. forever. Well said. Uh, wait, I want. I got a why, question. Why, why can't people be nicer to Mabel with your freaking donut face <laughs> and your your condescending tone? Holy shit! They really did fire your ass. <laughs> Okay. Wait, okay. That sounds very, right, very, very uh, specific. I have a question for Harold. Uh, why didn't Harold kill Santa? He, he just left, and uh, I mean, he wasn't gonna, you know, do make a public display. Excuse me, old man. Put you in my seat. Get lost. This is the big leagues, freak. Of, 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 so he just took off and went home and, and Do you think he planned to kill Santa, like come back and get him? It's because Harold is too impulsive. Yeah. And Mabel is calculated. Yeah. So she she figured out how to figured out get in there after, after hours, after hours or, or, exactly. you know, whatever she did to to be in there after hours with, with uh, the real Santa. Um, um, and uh, You are yeah. the real Santa. My take on that would be uh, Harold didn't kill Santa because 
in his core, Harold still believes in the magic of Christmas. So he believes that if he killed he Santa, know Christmas songs. <laughs> yes, he does. He was just nervous. He um, was just nervous. Yeah, that was actually what I said. It makes the most sense, James. Yeah. I think yeah. about it. Every time someone's called him a freak or whatever, he kills him seconds later. Yeah. yeah. And but you were in public, and yeah. if and if and you got into an altercation, an actual confrontation that yeah. other people witnessed, yeah. you'd probably be and, afraid and run away. Yeah. And exactly. you're you're gonna think like, well, if this person ends up dead, yeah, I'm gonna get blamed for it. Maybe you still will get blamed for it. Yeah, so you actually, dead. after you ran away, you so killed yourself. Plus, plus, he is, he is aware of his surroundings. You know, he's always looking around. Like in the first episode, he's you know sipping on the Pepsi and he's looking around. Hold on. So, Hold on. I have an idea. Wait, no, I have the best <laughs> no, idea. No, I have an idea. Oh my God, here we the go. The police go to Harold's house to question him about Santa being dead because he was the last person seen with him and they had a bad confrontation and Mabel answers the door. Right? Mm. Like you're, but that's the reason they're there, right? We have the reason they're there, there is because the connect. Yeah, someone. But yeah, this is how the Siri will. Wait, I have to get this out. <laughs> okay, okay. Wait, wait. Thank you for joining us for this Q&A. Does anybody have any final thoughts they want to say before we sign off? I just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and joined the Coleman Brothers family. Um, I want to say thank you to the team, uh, the crew, all the actors that have been a part of it. Thank you all very much. Uh, we're excited to bring you season two, which will be out very soon. I'm not going to tell you when, but soon. Uh, you're going to see some new faces. You're going to see some faces you recognize. You're going to see some people you uh, you might watch on other channels. Uh, all right, this is Mike Del Rosa. What? Thank you for liking and subscribing. <laughs> Again, this is Vincent Coleman. Thank you guys for watching our content and liking the series. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to go next. Well, like, what you're am I terrible. Doing? You don't think you really but got it. What? Yeah, like, um, what do I say? <laughs> Passing it off? See you guys in season two. Till next time. Bye. Let's go, guys. Come on. All right, let's go.